Hey, what's up everybody? Lionheart here and welcome to another tutorial of my in-depth series. This episode will focus on basics of the feared Great White Shark. We'll start by taking a quick look at some stats and his special ability. I'll then show you the basics of using the Great White and the best way to effectively score your diver kills by choosing appropriate evolutions. Then we'll discuss what maps are best suited for the Great White and at the end, I'll include a random match using the Great White so you can see everything that I covered in action. Let's begin by taking a look at some basic information. For starters, it is a tank class shark with maxed out levels of durability and thrash damage. This trade-off comes with a few weaknesses, namely being very slow and having little agility to maneuver with. Its special ability is called Juggernaut. When active, the Great White takes reduced damage from all sources. We'll cover this later in the tutorial, but for now, let's look at some more stats and see how it compares to other sharks. The Great White has the current largest health pool of any shark in game at 350 health. It is also tied with a few other sharks with the lowest stamina at only 100. If you were to deplete your stamina, it would take 3 seconds to regen fully. Eating one seal will grant you 105 health. It has a max base thrash damage of 20, which is the highest value. Attempting to kill a diver using only thrashing will take 1 and a quarter seconds. With latency and human error, we can increase this time slightly to around 1.4 seconds. Hitting Steve will do 8 points of damage. The time between lunging and darting is 1.5 seconds. A lunge costs 70 points of stamina with a dart costing the standard half amount at 35 points. Because we have exactly 100 points of stamina, these percentages are a respective 70 and 35%. The Great White is one of the few sharks in game that uses a low amount of stamina to sprint and can last an impressive 33.3 seconds before running out. And finally, it would take 12 stabs to kill you from full health. Before we can discuss what evolutions are best suited for the Great White's playstyle, let's jump into some testing so we can see how this shark was designed. The first thing we will examine is the Great White's stamina and how it relates to our movement. As you can see here, I've been sprinting for about 10 seconds and still have two thirds of my stamina remaining. This is due to the Great White using very little stamina to maintain a sprint. In contrast, using the lunge, which you may be used to from playing other sharks, will quickly deplete our stamina. This means that we primarily will use sprint to get around, especially when moving long distances. Because of the amount of stamina required for lunging, you should dart instead. This is something you might not be used to if you have been playing other sharks and may take some time to get a feel for the change in aim and distance. You will have to be closer to your target which will leave you exposed, but thanks to a larger health pull and special ability, you should be able to sustain any extra damage this may cause. Once you grab hold of your target, you should then continue sprinting making you harder to hit. If forced to use your lunge, you will have a harder time maneuvering around the safe room to avoid gunfire, grab a second diver, or just simply trying to escape as you will run out of stamina very quick. It's time to take a look at our special ability, Juggernaut. When activated, the Great White will take reduced damage from all sources for its duration. This damage includes being stabbed, diver weapons, ammo modifiers, and even damage taken from mines. The damage reduction ranges from 30% at Tier 1 and increases to 50% at Tier 3. The max duration will always be 3 seconds. At Tier 3, it will also ignore the effects of slows and nets while active. You should have this ability leveled by mid-game, but should be prioritized sooner if facing them earlier in the match. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of Juggernaut at Tier 1 being used to reduce damage from the SPP-1 pistol and Spear pistol. These are two of the most common weapons that you will face at the beginning of a match before you have a chance to level up your ability. Now here it is when swimming into a mine. You'll notice that even at the lowest level, Juggernaut prevents the Great White from taking fatal damage. Here is Juggernaut in Tier 3 against the ADS and Harpoon, two late game weapons that hopefully you will not have to face if you've effectively starved the gold supply of the divers early on. And here we see it against another mine. Here is Juggernaut at Tier 3 while being netted. We can maneuver just fine throughout the duration. Note that it will not cancel the effect, but merely ignore it. We still have to manually free ourselves, otherwise we'll be stuck. 
Here it is after grabbing a diver. You'll note that while Juggernaut is active, I can hold onto the diver and finish the kill. Without it, I'm forced to drop the diver. The next thing we are going to talk about is being chased. This will happen to you more often when you are playing the Great White than it will with any other shark. This is for several reasons. The first reason is very simple. You are slow and a big target. A Great White is easier to spot than any other shark. A second reason is that divers will incorrectly assume that you are at a lower health than you probably are since you should have mitigated a lot of damage during your attack. This is especially true when combined with the poison ammo modifier. It is more common than not to have multiple divers pick up this ammo type against you as it will deal significant damage. Its damage is percentage based, meaning the more total health you have, the more damage it does. Your teammate will hate you once every diver starts buying it. Being chased can seem like a bad thing, but only if you are not used to it. Once you teach yourself to look behind you after leaving your room, you will quickly find yourself scoring easy additional kills. Now that we understand how the Great White works, we can look at the evolutions. I'm going to break down my recommendations into three tiers. Early game, mid game, and late game. Early game evolutions are generally your highest priority as they will have the greatest effect on your ability to get the kills that you need easier, faster, and more successfully. I recommend double time and adrenal glands. Double time will significantly increase your speed while sprinting. With sprinting being our primary form of movement, there is no exception to not making this the first evolution that you buy. Adrenal glands is the most effective way of countering the Great White's most noticeable flaw, low stamina. Any damage taken will give you back large chunks of stamina. It will give you a much needed boost to maneuver around a room, grab another diver, or get out when you need to. This evolution should not be overlooked unless you need to prioritize your second and third tier or a situational evolution. Our mid-game evolutions are leveling Juggernaut from Tier 1 to Tier 3. These increase your survivability and will allow you to stay in a fight longer, potentially getting more kills. Our late-game evolutions are designed to handle the stronger weapons and equipment divers will have purchased by then. These are Vitalized Frenzy and Blood Feast. Vitalized Frenzy will effectively increase the duration of Juggernaut as it will reset the cooldown when achieving a kill on a diver, potentially allowing you to have 50% damage reduction from all sources for as long as you need during any fight. Blood Feast will regenerate health shortly after each kill. For the Great White, the amount of health received is 115 and a half. This is essentially one third of your total health pool. Note that there is a short delay of around one second before the evolution kicks in after achieving a kill. During this time, you cannot take any direct damage or you will slightly increase this delay. Damage over time modifiers such as poison will not affect this. These evolutions are not the only combination you can use, but they do outline the basic playstyle of the Great White Shark. There are other evolutions such as Nimble Finned you might enjoy. There are also some situational evolutions you may find yourself mixing into the list, such as Placoid Scales, which is pretty common when playing the Great White. Let's talk about the maps. As stated before, the Great White is a very large shark. This will make it more difficult to play on maps with smaller rooms or simply just small openings. The Great White is also very slow and has limited movement. This means that maps where Steve travels into open water will not be to your advantage. The Great White will excel on maps with larger rooms, enclosed to travel, and areas where divers have low visibility. Maps where the first safe room allow you to be very aggressive are ideal as you do not want divers becoming well equipped early on. Any shark can be used on any map to reach a certain degree of success, but you should generally be okay on these maps when playing as the Great White. Stash, Fractured, Temple, and Hillside. That's it for the tutorial part of the video. I hope that all of the information we covered was useful and will help you on your journey to mastering the basics of the Great White Shark. I want to thank my friend Dragon Girl for assisting with some of the test footage. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to drop a like and leave a comment. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more depth tutorials and other gameplay. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in game.
All right, let's check out the divers. No 100s, not really seeing any equipment. See, on a map like Stash, uh, it looks like we're going to be able to just get right at them. They don't have anything preventing us from doing a lot of damage from the get-go. Although my partner is a Mako, kind of wish he chose something different. I'm not certain I'm going to be able to help get his marks, but, you know, I'll do the best I can for him. Just go ahead and open up these sides here. Really? No one shot back? Alright. Let me get... Oh, well, partner is already in. Not sure if he's going to make it out of that. Oh, he escaped. Well, let me get this kill here. Alright, and I'm out. Chase me? Come on. Chase? No? No chase? Just wait for the first diver that shows up here. And this guy in... Oh, why did I do this? No. Uh, he, he moved and I just... I was already committed. It's alright. We'll just grab uh, double time, make things easier. Only getting one kill before my first death is kind of putting us at a slow start, but I can get a guy. Now I can miss. Alright, they do have mines, and are they gonna chase me? You still don't chase. We're gonna take out that mine before my friend hits it here. Didn't get any damage on a diver, but that did hit Steve as well, so I'm okay with that. Getting him this time though. And I'm out. Is he gonna chase? Yeah, he's gonna chase. He's gonna. Oh, come here, buddy. Thank you. All right, let's uh, let's get some seals here. I guess that guy got tired of me dipping in and out with his friends, and he decided to try and get me, but it didn't work out too well for him. Oh, looks like my friend just died. I keep calling him a friend. I I don't know the guy, but all sharks are friends. See, they already bought poison. Gonna be annoying. It's to be expected when playing the Great White, though. Should be able to clear them here, yeah? Oh, bleeding, bleeding, hide. He's not coming after me, though. Alright, grab more seals. That's poison and bleeding. I'm probably gonna have to pick up Placoid or Hemo this game just to not have to chase seals constantly. It's really gonna make this game slow and boring. Uh, we do have a pretty sizable lead right now, so I'm not really worried. Although they are already on save too. I think I've only hit Steve twice. Yeah. These guys don't look up. I'm gonna get his mark and I'm gonna miss, but hey, free mine kills right there. Clear the way. We got enough health. I gotta get this guy's mark. I'm gotta help him out a little bit. And I'm out. Is he chasing? Oh, he's chasing. He's giving up those free kills. Honestly, I should have died to that mine in there. I just barely missed it. I don't want to have to go after another seal. I've got enough health. I can get one more kill. Just waiting for someone to move close to the mine. Here we go. Oh, I'm not making it out, though. What? <laughs> Nobody shot at me. All that uh, ding, ding, ding damage you heard was just the diver stabbing me. I think the mine explosion actually disoriented and deafened them. They didn't know what was going on. Still, one bullet would have taken me out pretty easily. Here I am grabbing seals again. Now let's get back into the mix. Going through the top usually works. Yeah, I can get in and out. Get stuck a little bit. Oh, he's chasing. Come here. Yeah, you can miss with those spear pistols. Let's take out that buoy, or I can miss. Here we go. I was moving so slow when that guy missed me again with the spear pistols. He definitely shouldn't have bought them. All right, let's avoid these mines. Get this guy. No. Yeah, dash there at the end. Alright, buddy, let's get some kills in the open. Now right, you got your mark, good job. I'll get this guy, and then number two coming up. Or I can miss because of Steve, and then I'm bleeding, and I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna not die because they didn't chase me even though I was bleeding. Good job. That's what you get. Can I get it? Oh, I thought I did him dirty. I was in and out. He actually hit me with the spear pistol finally. And 120 points! Is that 12 kills, no deaths. Amazing. Skipping Juggernaut and grabbing Blood Feast here because I'm not taking that much damage and I'm tired of chasing seals. I'll just get through the store with the diver, or I can get stuck on it because I'm a big old great white. Okay, follow me out. 
Oh yeah, I did. Oh yeah, I could miss again. This is actually a bad game for me. Oh, he's coming back. Got you that time. It looked like he tried to place something, but it didn't actually go down. Uh, at least this blood feast is keeping me alive right now from this poison. Still have to go chase seals though. You know, sometimes I think this game is more fun when you do die. You get to actually spend your evolution points and you get back quicker. Speaking of getting back quicker, I like how when I was almost dead, I took the long way to the seals. Now that I'm full health, I take the shortcut back. And they have flares, I gotta get quick, quick, quick. No, mine, mine, mine! It was great timing. He just placed that. It's all right. We can grab Juggernaut since we skipped it earlier. It's going through the back. I've been going through the front a lot. And through the doorway. No, I got stuck in mine. Oh, thank you. Bleeding, poison, mines. This is not a fun game. Let's just go back in there and clear out any more mines if they've got them. And, of course, they do. I think there was one more above me there, but it didn't go off. I wasn't close enough. All right, there. I just heard it. There should be no more mines in that room. I swear, if there's another mine... Well, I can't do anything about it. And... Grab a guy. No one. Really? He placed it as I darted at him. Like he wanted to die. I think it did a lot of collateral damage there. It even hit Steve. I don't know why the captain sent a shark shield down. It's just gonna get blown up by a mine. It's going through the side. Actually, Steve's about to move. I'm just gonna go ahead and go up top. Open up those doors on the side so I can get in and out. Plus, I'd like to get up there before they place a bunch of mines. Did I break the door on the other side? No, that was it. the other safe I did. Maybe I'll go ahead and get this one. Alright, let's see who's coming up first. Here we go. And you're dead. And I'm out because you have a volley jet. Is he gonna follow me? No, of course not. They only follow me when I'm at full health. They never chase when I'm ready to die. Let's just finish this up. Get in, get back out. Poison. It's all right, the uh, blood piece is gonna heal me back up. I just gotta sit here for a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna go grab a seal or two. I'd like to finish these guys without having to die one more time. Now, I'm fairly certain he has bleed on that, uh, that volley jet to deal with that Mako. But I don't think the Mako's hit double digits and kills, and I'm definitely over 20 by now. So he, sh he should be equipping himself to deal with me, and Drag and Trank would be a lot better for him. And I'm just diving in at this shark shield. Like, yeah, got somebody too. Can I get out? Nope. PATs. Just gonna grab Hemo because there's no point in not getting it. Also, I have a daily to take out 30 diver equipment. Yeah, I got it all. Alright, let's just finish this up. There's one. Wait, one guy still hasn't respond yet. They definitely still had that ticket when I died earlier. That PAT still up. I'm just gonna ignore it. I've got enough health, I'll get this last guy. Just duck around the corner. And that's game. Ending on a triple is always fun. Uh, if it seemed like I was getting frustrated because of all the mines, it's not because I think that they're overpowered or cheap or anything like that. I just know that it's a sign of diver desperation, and after a while, it kind of gets annoying. Yeah, you know, that's just how I feel about it personally. Anyways, I hope that this gameplay was able to show you some of the strengths and weaknesses to a great white. Personally, I prefer speed sharks in the hit and run playstyle, which I think some of that actually showed here. But because my partner was an inexperienced Mako, I wouldn't have done much good sticking in the fight after I got the initial kill. Generally though, whenever you are playing with someone that is experienced, especially if you're communicating, you're going to get in there, you're going to take the initial blunt of the attack, you're going to be the big distraction, your partner's going to get the kills, and you're, you're just going to be very aggressive and you're not going to give them any room to breathe. These guys actually had ample opportunities to get additional gold, they had a good chance to come back, but they spent all their money on mines. 